let's start talking about what to do when things go wrong with our Spark job. It has a web-based console that we can look at in some circumstances, so let's look at that first. Let's talk a little bit about troubleshooting Spark jobs on a cluster, and you know, honestly, it's a little bit of a dark art. I mean, usually, if it's not immediately obvious from the output of the uh, Spark driver script what's going on, a lot of times what you're going to end up doing is just throwing more machines at it, throwing more memory at it, you know, like we looked at with the uh, executor memory option there. Um, but if you're running on your own cluster, at least, or one that you have within your own network, Spark does offer a console UI that runs by default on port 4040. And it does give you a little bit more of a graphical in-depth look as to what's going on and a way to access the logs and see what executor is doing what. And that can be helpful in understanding what's happening. Now, unfortunately, in Elastic MapReduce, it's pretty much next to impossible to actually connect to Spark's UI console from outside of Amazon's network. But if you have your own, cl your own cluster running on your own network, it might be a good option for you. So just so you see what it looks like in case you end up using a Spark cluster that's run by your employer or something where you do have access to the console. Let's take a look at it just running on our local machine. So we'll kick off a larger uh, similarities build script and take a peek at it, see what it looks like. So real quick, let me show you the Spark UI, the console, if you ever need it, if you're running on a, uh, if you have local network access to your master node on your cluster, then you should be able to access this on port 4040. So let me kick off a, uh, script that takes at least a minute here, our original movie similarity script here on my desktop. And we'll kick that off. And as soon as that starts, I can open up a browser and navigate to localhost colon 4040 to open up port 4040 on my computer. And you can see here we have this display of any active jobs currently running. And we can click through on that to drill in and see some cool stuff. We have an actual visualization of the directed acyclic graph that Spark used. We have a timeline here that we can use for troubleshooting where all the time is being spent in our job, for example. So we could click on one of these and get more details on that stage. And you can just drill down there and like try to figure out what's taking all the time and what you might need to optimize, what might, might need to be partitioned better. Another useful thing is the environment tab here, which tells you all the various paths and dependencies and software versions that are installed. So if you're running on a cluster that you don't necessarily have direct control over, that can be useful information. And I think our job already finished, but I pretty much showed you everything. We can kick it off again just to go through it again. So executors actually shows individual executors, and you can drill into thread dumps and actually see what's going on here in as much depth as you want to. The stages tab also shows you details in each individual stage running. So yeah, if you need to like get more insight into where your Spark job is at, where it might be stuck at, and things you might need to optimize, this gives you all the information you might need. So it's actually pretty slick. There you have it. And there you have the Spark console. As I mentioned, it's hard to get to on EMR, though that might change in the future. And I hope it does. But if you're running on another cluster that you have more direct access to, or even within your own network, it's a good way to figure out what's going on and get a good sense of how long different steps are taking. You can also just watch the output of your driver script to get a good sense of what's going on as well, but obviously the UI will give you a better sense of what's happening under the hood. Let's talk about some more troubleshooting tips next.